My son, Bo, will be getting married soon, and uh, his bride-to-be wants to meet with us. I need your guys' help. How much you need? Now, the first thing that comes out of a parent's mind is, well, it's more money. <laughs> I don't need no money. Oh, yeah, that's a plus. I want you guys to make a moonshine for mine and Bo's wedding toast. Mm -hmm. No, it's something a little more special than money. Tater wants to have a special liquor. Let me ask you something. Is this a surprise for Bo? Does he yes. Know? So we don't need so we to don't need Don't tell, tell Bo. Yeah, we can make you some liquor. You want a rye liquor that's got a little spice to it? No. <laughs> a good hearty corn liquor? No. I want it to be something completely different than what you guys have done. Uh, if it's a good drink of liquor, Bo's on board, but You've got his bride to be, you've got to satisfy. Do you have any idea what you want it to taste like? Something sweet. You want it to taste like a wedding cake? Yeah, right. Well, yeah, we can make it taste like a wedding cake. Come on now. Well, of course we can. She sounds a little bit skeptical to me. If we can make it taste like wedding cake, you'll be OK with that. Do you really think you can do that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's doable. I'm with him. He's the mice man. If he says wedding cake liquor, then we'll try it. Wedding cake liquor it is. OK. Uh, Bye, guys. Smells good in here, don't it? Smells you? like we're in the right spot. I've got a boy fixed to get married, and uh, they want a special liquor for their reception toast. So got to thinking, well, what hadn't been done? I don't know that anybody's ever made liquor out of wedding cake. How do, ma'am? Oh. Howdy. We're looking for wedding cake. We don't want it for oh, yeah, us. It ain't for us. us. Okay. So. No, no, no. For what date? Uh, today's. Well, I didn't know that you had to order a wedding cake in advance. We're just looking for around eight pounds of cake. Pounds? Yeah. OK. <laughs> I've got some yesterday's news in the back. OK. Oh, we're all about yesterday's news. We ain't had nothing fresh in our lives. As long as they're good and sweet. Look here at these little fellas. Those are cake balls. We'll take some of them. All right. You got cupcakes? Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've done the math, and we need about eight pounds of cake. Here's what I have oh. left from yesterday. You don't have to separate it. You can just okay. put it all in a box. Oh, OK. Let yeah. me taste them little crumbs okay. right there. Please. It won't hurt me, will it? No. Nope. Well, there's mine right over there. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, that's an eight pound of cake. Bye, thank you. Bye. Well, now comes the point we have to mash in and turn into some fine liquor. What kind of liquor it will make, if any, we have no idea. But, you know, we got some really good cakes. People pays money to see dancing water like that. Looks just like that big pond out there in Las Vegas, don't it? I don't know. I ain't never been. Here, hold this, and I'll light that furnace. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Are you going to melt that sugar before you put the cake in it? No, we just put it all together. This is going to be craziest damn liquor we've ever made. We found some just really sweet, really good, good cupcakes, cake, whatnot. You want any of this before it goes? Quit eating all the damn cake. And, you know, we probably gained about eight pounds a piece in there just to sniffing and sampling and tasting. There. Thank you. If you get any more, you're going to get it out there. Oh. I won't want you to start it up. Looks like a clown puke, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> don't some taste that. Mother of pearl. <laughs> That's <is> delicious. <laughs> That's the best tasting mash I've ever tasted in my life. Well, let's just put it in a jar like it is. And put a little liquor in there with it. Add some liquor in it. It can be the finest tasting mash in the world. But honestly, to you put it in a still and cook it up, you know, there's no way of knowing if it will be good liquor or not. We can't leave this mash. The buyers can't get in them toast, but he'll pick that up and dump it out lickety split. Let's put it back in the truck and take it with us. You know, I can't think of anything else that'd be a clear recipe for disaster than to leave this mash in here. If there's a bear within 20 miles of here, he'll be here in a few hours. Hmm. Oh. Damn, it don't look special, don't it? It does. It's potent, ain't it? I can smell it all the way up here. You know, this is something we've never done before. We've never done anything with cake. It's kind of off-the-wall idea, ain't it? It's a roll the dice. We don't know. 
It's ready to run. I say, let's put us a little liquor still together. We're going to use one of the little squatty potty stills, as we call them. This is a small run, so we're dragging one of our little stills out here and running in. Yonder it comes. You know, we've made moonshine out of everything, but not cakes. You know, this is a new ball game for us. We know it'll make liquor, but we ain't got no idea what it'll be like. It's your turn to blow up. Ah, this one I don't think will blow us up. You know, we always tease each other and say, whose time is it to blow up? I said, well, it's mine. Ain't no way this one will gonna hurt me. You could actually do it all yourself. I'm gonna go over here in a safe spot, so you won't blame me if any of this goes wrong. Thought you said it wouldn't do that. Well, that's wrong. Look at that. These propane burners, they'll, they'll blow out on you every once in a while. You gotta exercise caution. This, these things will hurt you. Well, look at that. Smell you, what are you, my what eyebrows you, gone? What eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> I think that I was opening the valve the wrong direction and I was filling it underneath the steel full of gas and when I let it kablooey. Well, we couldn't call it a Brazilian, what we call a hillbilly. Hillbilly and them <laughs> bikini wax here. I no longer have any hair on this arm, and I think all but a couple of my eyelashes are gone. Now nah, it's a burning, right? I can't see so good out of this eye no more. Huh. How many fingers am I holding up? As you say it, I ain't sad. Turn up. I ain't sad. I'm just cooked. If you could see what I'd see, you'd be sad. <laughs> Liquor matrimonial moonshine. I don't know what it'll taste like, but I know one thing. I guarantee you it'll get them drunk. Oh, yeah. Now, if some liquor just show up. It's just a waiting game, ain't it? Yep, right there. That's running slow, but no more liquor than we're going to make. I think that's perfect. We're going to run it as slow as we possibly can. I mean, it just has to drip out. The slower you run it, the less it burns your goes out, and the better liquor it is. Oh, yeah, it's good liquor. There's a little bit of a nutty flavor there from them nuts that was in that one cake. I'd drink that all day long. It tastes just like cake. It's unreal. There at the front, there's coconut, and uh, at the very back, there's just a little finish with some of the walnuts that were in one of those cakes. It's not too sweet, but uh, uh, we'll syrup it up. We already have the crucial component in our drink. We have the spice rum with all our flavors in it. Today, we're going to start mashing in our bananas foster part of it. We're going to mash in some bananas and some sugar cane together, and we can get our bananas foster out of the still as quick as possible. I feel like Donkey Kong, right? Hey, man, I got the sugar cane. Whoa, what the hell? I'm just trying to make some good shine, boy. Man, that's a lot of bananas, man. I want to just get the machete and start whacking. You got to take the tops off and the bottom off. And I mean, that's a long process. It doesn't take long to peel one banana, but think of peeling 300 pounds of bananas. Some new guys, man. These guys got money. This New Orleans, man. Yeah, it's a lot of high rollers out there. Yeah, man, you got to be a high roller. You asking somebody to make a bananas for the moonshine? I got wrong D. We have a lot of tried and true recipes that we know make money. This is something new to us. So the upside for this is if we impress our buyer in New Orleans, this can open up a whole new market for us. So when we finish with all these, what are we going to do next? We're going to boil them down, add the sugar cane to it. Everything that we've needed to achieve, as far as taking out things we don't want in it, it'll be done. I think this is the end of the line right here, man. Oh! See how heavy that is? Come on, pick it up. Go over there. That's a couple of hundred pounds of bananas. That's what it feels like. Now that we have our pot full of bananas, we're going to start adding some water, light our burner, bring it to a boil. You know what we got to bring to the party now, though? Now we got to chop up some sugar cane. Oh, yeah. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. The thing about cane sugars are they're very, very, very sugary. They have a real high sucrose content to them. So we don't need a whole lot of this stuff, just enough clean sugar to bring a real true taste through. Yeah, I think it's ready, man. Let's pour in and cool it down. Now we have a sweet banana with its own sugars and these cane sugars that we provided to it. Once we pitch our yeast in it, they're going to have a field day. This thing is going to blow up. All right, Craig, we're cool enough, man. Ready for the yeast? Yeah, let's pitch that. 
just what we have right now as a base is awesome. We're starting out with a solid foundation. You see this vanilla right here? It's gonna give a nice, pleasant flavor. Just that little bit of vanilla you would think would not be enough to do anything. Well, sir, you would be sadly mistaken. I could take this banana mash right now and just put it straight on top of a bowl of ice cream and you'll think you had one of the most awesome banana desserts ever. All right, we'll come back in a few days. We'll caramelize the nut. Man, look at that thing, man. You can hug this thing. Look at that. It's nice. That's when you got a good mash. I can see the vapors coming off of there. Today we're back at the still site, and this mash is working. I mean, it's really bubbling. It's real hot. Yeah, that's a thick cap. This thing has a huge cap, and it's probably six, eight inches. And you know, it's not typical you see a big, huge cap like that in a ferment. This will probably be ready in a day, man. Look at that. Vanilla bean. Vanilla bean. While we're letting this work off, we'll go ahead and uh, macerate our nuts, soak them in our base spirit. That's a real good alcohol. If we were just going for that right there, we'd be good. In a banana's frosted dessert, it calls for nuts to be used. So we're gonna caramelize those today, and we're gonna add them into our spice rum, and we're gonna let them sit. We got acorns, my favorite, walnuts. We're gonna go with almonds next. One of the most serious components of this drink is that the caramelization factor is there, and you can taste it. I mean, we could dump some brown sugar in here. A little bit more. Little Look more. at that. I'm gonna give you that whole shot there right you go. there. That's good right there. When this dessert was made at first in the 1950s in New Orleans, it was prepared with brown sugar, butter, cinnamon, banana liqueur, spiced rum. It was flambéed tableside by a chef. Can you taste it in the, in the sauce? It's ice cream. It's ice cream. All these things have to be done in proportion, and that's what we do. We make sure that everything is proportionate so our flavors balance and don't kill each other. That's what this drink deserves. So we're gonna let this simmer a little bit, cook down. We'll get a bucket and put that in, and we'll start fresh again. Every step of this drink is amazing. We could have stopped a very long time ago with this process. It look about done, man. Caramelized and everything. This foundation we know is drilled to bedrock, and it will not go nowhere. That's what we do when we make alcohol. We make sure that our foundation is so solid that it cannot be moved. There we go. Look like a banana sundae. Good alcohol. <laughs> we went for a real low alcohol content in this banana mash. We didn't want to clash with the other rum that we had, so we didn't use a yeast that produced a real high alcohol by volume. All right, that's damn near it, man. That's almost all of it. So this thing should be around 12 to 14, which is what we need to get in here. That should give us a nice 90, 95, hopefully, of a real good spirit. We're gonna light up. We're gonna get some heat under here. Good deal. That's not for looks. That's for effective. We have the pot lit, and it's gonna take a little while to get the temperature. And it's all playing together perfect. I think we're on the right track. It's hot. Yeah, we're about right here. It's getting there. It's going to take a little while. So this is still under pressure a little bit, but it's starting to do a second form of distillation here. Now, when this heats up and gets under pressure and builds up enough steam to start carrying over, now we got a serious situation on our hands. Yeah, it's down here. Here we go, about right there. It's almost in the thumper. Oh, yeah, we're in the thumper already. Yeah, we should start running here. Oh, yeah, I can smell it coming through here, man. Though, I need a bucket. See, I'll get you a bucket. No, give me a jar. I can start to smell things coming out of the worm now. It's getting close. The banana's definitely coming out. It smells like the Caribbean in here. I mean, you can even get the hint of the spices coming out of here. All right, we got a nice little drip here, man. We're gonna throw these heads off of here, man. There's plenty enough heads. Don't kill all that poison ivy right there. I'm gonna just let it run low and slow like that. That's perfect, man. Everything's working, it's dripping. We have so many different components in one still cooking right now. Uh-uh, this ain't right. What the hell you mean it's not right? No, man, something wrong. Cut that burn off. We're sipping on the drink and we're trying to figure out what we're missing. We can see that we have the creaminess. We realize we don't have the vanilla flavor with this creaminess. This is the good stuff. Madagascar. Vanilla beans. I didn't put enough into it, so we're going to do this as quick as possible, try to hurry up and get this into the thumper. And that should change it. That should give us what we need as far as a vanilla taste. I want all of it in here. Now that we charge the thumper, 
we have to nail this. There's no going back. We have to get this right. Oh yeah, she's spitting again. Oh, we running. I thought the last time was the moment of truth, but this is a real moment of truth. Nah, I taste vanilla. I told you, boy. That's it? Mm-hmm. That's it. It's good, too. It's what we've been waiting for. That's what we wanted. That's a relief. I mean, vanilla is definitely here now. Now this is a true bananas foster. Now we got a Bayou Buffet going on. Now we got a true Louisiana delicacy we just did. Me and Jerry, we want to make top chef high dollar premium alcohol. That's our goal for this season. You know, less alcohol, but for a higher price. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, get you a snort of it. What's it taste like? Tastes pretty good. Oh my God, son, it's ready. Holy, oh my God. That is fine That's good enough to drink crack just like it is. When you mash in fruit and ferment it, it turns into wine. It's a semi-sweet, semi dry. Semi-dry, yeah. Oh my Don't God, it's good. Wine. This blueberry mash, this is some of the finest looking wine a man could ever lay his eyes on. Whatever we've done, by God, we've done something right. Let's get this stuff skimmed over here and get it in a pot. Got a nice thick cake on the top of it. Really, really pretty, real deep, dark in color. It smells great, tastes damn good too. Get some of that fine blueberry wine pouring here. That's about full. Cap her off. Let me get this started and you can tap that cap a little. The paceless cap. The paceless cap. Fire it up, son. Tell you what, let's go over and dip us off a little bit of that wine. That'd be good. You know, I've bought a lot of wine in my life. I've made a lot of wine at home in my life. But this is some of the best stuff I believe I've ever put in my mouth. That's too good not to drink, man, I'm telling you. Well, you know who would love this right here? Who? Jenna, my fiance. Me and Jenna, we've been together now for seven years. We've actually been engaged for basically seven years. We finally made a date to get married. We're gonna go ahead and put the last nail in the coffin, so to speak. She likes stuff like that? Damn, she loves a good wine, man. She'd be over here with a damn straw sucking the bottom out of this damn thing. You know, the, the, the blueberry brandy is real damn good. Oh, yeah. This has got whole different, whole whole different, different complexity to it. I'm gonna throw one at you. Something I ain't never even done, I ain't even attempted to do. What'd that be? You know how I like bubbly Oh, you, know, you like bubbly, all right. I'd like to make a champagne, sparkling wine, something like that out of this. A shine pain. I believe it's cleared up quite a lot. It has. Looks like it anyway. This wine, we've let it set, let the sediments go to the bottom. We're gonna siphon again and leave the sediment behind in the first vessels that we're pulling from. You ready? Okay. There we go. Let her roll. Another time or two by that, she'll be right, won't it, baby? Right as rain, son. Man, this wine is beautiful. I mean, it's got that blueberry color, almost like a beet juice, so to speak, a deep red mahogany color. You can actually look right here next to you see, see, it. see all the floaties and stuff right here close to the bottom. Yes, sir, I see it. Yeah, that's what we don't want to get into. We don't want to lose the color and the good flavor of this wine by racking it a thousand times. That was done. Well, let's rack another. But if we don't get all the yeast out, racked off, it can create hydrogen sulfide which is that rotten egg smell. And nobody wants to drink a damn fart. Well, I'll tell you what, they wasn't kidding. They said it was a timely process. Yeah, it takes a long damn time to do all this, don't it? Just racking it off is taking enough time. If it, you want it to be right, I guess we gotta take our time and do it right, right? That's right, right. <laughs> right, right, son. Well, let's get these washed out. Last year, everything come to a screaming halt. This year, everything's blowing up, going wide open. People can now afford a good high-end product. This is going to be something different that people are going to want to get their hands on. This is a fine, shine pain. We'll just check these and see exactly what we got going on. Champagne should be right around 12% alcohol by volume. But the wine itself needs to be about 10% because the second fermentation that makes our bubbles will only create two more percent of ABV. When we mashed in all these blueberries, we wasn't really concerned about the alcohol content because we was gonna run this through and make a brandy out of it. What do you say? 
proof. Mm -hmm. Scary to say. No, over here. Well, it looks like about, about eight. About eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I reckon you're right. You know, 8% is a lot down closer to the 10% we need to be at. But still, I don't know what in the hell we're going to do to make it work. We got good flavor across the board. All we got to do is add a little fortification juice here. Have her ready to rock and roll. Where we? she needs to be. Jerry comes up with the idea of putting some brandy that we've already run off of these blueberries into this wine to bring it up to the 10% mark. So what we're doing here is we're actually adding our, our uh, blueberry brandy to our blueberry wine. We're actually bringing the ABV up on our wine so it'll be like a normal champagne ABV would be. You know, I'm not wild about, about putting the brandy in the champagne, because if we sold the brandy and the champagne separately, that's more money in our pockets. But because this wine turned out so good, this gives me and Jerry a unique opportunity. Well, look at that pretty stuff. We're going to bring something very special and high end to the market. It's showing about 10 or 11. That's what we're looking for, ain't it? we got it just right. You know, me and Jerry, we don't want to serve weak champagne. We don't want people to say, you know, that's good, but it's awful sweet and ain't no alcohol there. It's hard to get her done right here, Jerry. We want to give them a good little punch. When they take that swallower out of that glass, that's blueberry champagne with a good kick of alcohol. Cap that bad boy off. Let them set, let them settle. We're ready for bottling. Next step, we got to do our second fermentation. We got to put our champagne yeast in each bottle, a little extra sugar. That brings the ABV up a little bit more, but creates the bubbles as well. It not take that long to do, does it? No, just a few seconds and it's full. Modern day inventions, huh? How many mountain shiner made champagne have you ever had? No. I don't think many people has. We've got 48 bottles of this champagne bottled up, and now we've got to put our champagne yeast and a little bit of more sugar in each bottle and cap them off with a bottle capper. Then we can ferment under pressure, which can uh, creates your bubble effect inside of the wine. A quarter of a teaspoon of sugar, a quarter of a teaspoon of champagne yeast to each bottle. If it's not the right amount, it could not do anything at all. It could come out perfect or you can start exploding bottles. The cork on a bottle of champagne, that bubble that comes out that pressurizes it, that's the carbon dioxide. That's the result of the yeast eating the sugar, creating the carbon dioxide gas. Can't wait to see these damn bottles bubble up. You know, these caps that we're putting on, this is just strictly to be able to do our fermentation process under pressure. We're gonna get rid of those caps. Then we'll put our regular cork in our wire cage around it, keep the cork in place, and then it's ready to drink. Be Hello, sweetheart. Hey, baby. What are you doing? Um, I've been looking online at a few dresses, and I think I found me two. Um, I think I need some help deciding, though. Okay. Well, it's whatever you want, baby girl. And I found a few caters. I think you know that'll give us a really good deal. That's cool. That is great. Well, In New Iberia, Louisiana, while waiting for the copper sheets to arrive for their new submarine, still. Richard and his brother Craig are on their way to procure ingredients for a nostalgic take on rum. The smallest deal will give us the opportunity to experiment with some things. So we're going to go ahead and make a cotton candy rum. Hey, Miss Rhonda, how oh, you doing? Hi. We're looking for some cotton candy today. Please tell me you have some. Oh, you're in luck. My little brother knows this lady that makes this cotton candy at her snow cone factory. How many you got? I have 17 pink vanilla bags. Okay. We'll take all we'll 17. We'll take all of them. Okay. Here in South Louisiana, times are tough. We just kind of want to lighten the mood for everybody right now. Cotton candy is something that everyone enjoys. We're the first people to ever do this. I've never seen anybody do this before. Yeah, well, maybe it's a reason nobody does it. We're about right. to find out right We're now. We're about to find out. We like to be the first to do things. So we do a, a small five-gallon run of that and see what we get out of it. We'll be good to go. This will be a good room. 17 bags of cotton candy. I can't wait for everyone to taste this. I just, I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. Come on, you feel like driving? If you don't, I guess I will. We're gonna mash in some brown sugar and some cotton candy, and we've never done anything like it before. So Roland came down with us. My scientist, my brother-in-law, he's here with us also. We got all our cotton candy ready to go. We got our brown sugar here. We're gonna start a cotton candy rum today. Not typical that we'd have to start a fire here, especially in Louisiana, to warm up. This water comes from a natural spring 
in Moffitt Springs, Texas. Roland, he found a spring in Texas. They have a real good water. It stays at a constant pH for us. This area right here has a lot of problems with calcium and fluoride additives that they put in water around here. It's real hard to deal with this water when making alcohol. It's worth the effort of having to bring some water from Texas to have a real good product. We got 17 bags of cotton candy. So we'll go six and a half pounds of brown sugar. And six and a half pounds of cotton candy, that'll give you the 13 pounds. That'll be the 13 pounds. In a normal mash, we'd just be working with fruits. We might be working with a grain or something like that. In this cotton candy, there are 20 different kinds of chemicals. We don't want any of these chemicals to carry over into the flavor of our moonshine. We can take them out, we can boil them. They have boiling points. What we want is the flavor of cotton candy and the flavor of this brown sugar that we're putting in it. So that's where our chemistry comes in. That's where Roland comes in. Whenever they tell me what they're doing, I just start doing a little research and with all the ingredients that's involved and kind of try to break it down to a science because although I know they make a good product, what we want to do now is try to figure out how to make it consistent. The main thing is just to keep those temperatures in line so that we get out what we need and keep what we need to maintain that flavor that we're looking for. That's the main thing. We're going to use some brown sugar, some complex sugars, and we're going to see if we can make these sugars complement with the sugars that are already in this cotton candy and come out with something different. Man, this smells so good. I can't wait to smell this in a mason jar. When the water's warm enough and you just drop some cotton candy in it, it just starts to melt. It's oozing this sugary, caramelly substance. Look at that. I know. Look at the color in the pot. It's starting to turn in a nice dark burgundy. Yeah, yeah. temperature rising. So how quick that goes. We're gonna get rid of all of those things that don't need to be there. Make sure that we could get the, the acetone out of here. During the process, you can smell the chemicals coming out. I'm starting to get the smells now. You start to smell the acetone, and that's something I definitely don't want to carry over into the moonshine. It's the last bag, gentlemen. Look like we're coming up on yep. temp. Let's go ahead and drop this in there and be yeah, done with it. It's on temperature. This is what we need. How sticky this is. This is what we want. That's Sugars. what we want. We're going to control this. We're going to watch this. So we're going to be playing with boiling water at the time, but we're more concerned with boiling acetone out of here. We need the acetone gone. We don't want to bring it over into the ferment. Well, managing that temperature is going to be crucial. Managing right. the temperature is serious. We're Especially going to have to make sure we keep sugar it right. in there. Oh, yeah, look at that color. And I don't smell any more chemicals, y'all. Yeah, I think we burned them all out. Yeah, they out of there. I think it's about ready. Pick it up, bro. We use a blender yeast that we do ourselves. It's kind of proprietary. Oh, yeah, yeah, that looks good. That's perfect right there. It looks good yeah. to me. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. That's how it's supposed to look. We've got all our bad chemicals out. We're going to sit inside, firm in a few days, come back and cook it later. Good right there. Watch your step. We're cooking cotton candy rum today. It's time to put a new flavor in town. I want to be known as a bag of jelly beans with so many flavors, people never get tired. I want to go past the corns, I want to go past the grains, I want to go past the scotches and the rise and all that. Still here, man. Mash is still here. Everyone loves cotton candy. Everyone's going to love this. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That smells so nice. We never pump straight from the fermenter. We always filter. We use cheesecloth to make sure that we don't have anything at the bottom of our pot that can burn. It'll turn over into the flavors, and that's just not good. This is our cooling system. This is how we bring water from the bayou. We're able to take this water from the bayou and cool down our condenser. This is a cold, cold water. It's perfect for what we need. That old murky bayou water, but I promise you it's cold. All right, it's a waiting game now. I'm going to make a paste. This is going to close up any cracks that we might have in our system. Where leaks occur, money leaks out. It's also flammable, highly flammable. You can never have too much of safety in place. I don't have to worry about my little brother having to explain to his wife how he's got third degree burns and he can't bring no money in the house. Look at the steam coming out of here. See right now what's coming out of here is the heads. This is where the methyl alcohol is. This is the bad stuff. This is the alcohols that we don't want in our drink. That's the heads. This is the first time we're doing cotton candy moonshine, but I think we're gonna have a good product to share with everybody. Right, we're looking nice and tight around our fittings. It's good. We roll it low and slow. I don't like it to run real fast, so I figured a little less than four hours, we ought to be drinking cotton candy moonshine. And a little less than four hours ought to be tipsy, because I can't wait to taste that stuff. Hey, you hear that? You hear that? What is it? It's an airplane? Sound like an airboat. Watch get down. It. something coming. Come get, on. Down. Get, down. Get, get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down.
Man, we're gonna have to build something right we're here. We're gonna have man. to build something. That was a bar, so these guys are... Come on, you know I'm getting old, man. These guys are not out having fun. They actually have a job to do, so they're they gonna just keep moving. That's some good old boys right there. We can give them some liquor. They'll keep their mouth quiet. People around here are generally okay, but we're stuck. We're out here. We're running now. I mean, that's the way you go to jail right there. We starting to drip? Yeah. Here it is. It's coming. Yeah, that's what I wanted right there. Pink cotton candy. Man, that's a good cotton that's candy the flavor cotton right candy there. candy right there. When that drip comes out, there's a pleasant smell. I could taste instantly real good alcohol coming out. It's like nostalgic. You know, it's going to take everybody back to their childhood. Man, take a sip of that, man. Smells man, like good, cotton candy. Man. Tastes like cotton candy. It's real hot. It tastes just like cotton candy. It has a little bite, but I think as it flows on, it's going to mellow out a little bit. You know, it's hard times right now. Everybody ain't got no money right now. You know, everybody wants to enjoy something different. It's like nostalgia with the cotton candy. And on the flip side, it's like I'm on a roller coaster ride, up and down. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you this is 150. What can I bet you? Let me see. I promise you. 150. 150. You don't bet with me because you know. Hell. You've got every damn skip nine in the state of Alabama, ain't you? And part of the Florida panhandle, too, brother. You know, we finished a little run for bees that he dubbed Ambrosia. And the scup nines come through great. Now, we want to make a scup nine cognac. There's a ton of sugar in there, mm -hmm. ain't there? And these are just right. You scored on these. Cognac is a high-end liquor. There's no reason ours can't be a high-end liquor and command a big price as well. People are working again. They're willing to pay good money for a top-quality product. To be a true cognac bees, you have to distill it twice. So if we do a strip and run and Big Sloppy and get the alcohol all out of the mash, then we have to re-distill the alcohol in the spirit run. OK. Then we barrel age it. Cognac is double distilled, number one, to up the proof and concentrate the flavors. We're using Big Sloppy on this run because right now it's the biggest still we've got that's functional in our stable, and she makes fine liquor. I think this will make some killer cognac. Hey, let's call it killer cognac. <laughs> There's probably a few hundred pounds of scup nines here. So if we were going to stomp every one of these, we're looking at two days' work. We don't have the time to dedicate to that. So I brought my chipper shredder that we use to shred whole corn. Well, if it'll run through a cob of corn, the grape ain't gonna be no problem at all. Man, that is great right there. That is... I told you. Boy, smell how good it smells. Yeah. Now that's getting all the damn juice and the gritty. Boy, I am so tickled you got this sucker. This pulled our ass out of fire a couple of times. Well, we'll be done with this in no time. Yes, we will. I love this. You know, it don't matter how hard it work, you still have to have some fun doing it. And uh, there ain't nothing any more fun than pranking bees any chance that we get. What'd you do to it? This thing just quit. Mm. It didn't lock up, it just power went away and it stopped. Generator run out gas? No, it's full. I filled it up or cranked it. Yeah, we ain't even halfway done yet. You know, in the moonshiner's world, there is something always that goes south on it. And this is something that bees hadn't been around enough yet to learn. I don't see anything in there. I'm going to say all this juice has fouled the motor up. You'd think it would be sealed, though, wouldn't it? Well, bees, you know what that means? Um, I do. Get them shoes off. OK. Them feet, they look like they should be on a damn hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> Bees thinks, man, I'm going to save the day right here, and I'm going to be a hero. And he's all in, head down wide open. All right, let's see how this works. Good Lord. Man, I'm not heavy enough to smush <laughs> these good. Boy, <laughs> if anybody sees us doing this crap right here, we'll be blackballed from the world of damn liquor. I just want y'all to know this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. It don't look so bad. You're missing some. Yeah, I know. Well, my feet ain't fat like y'all's. Man, this is so slippery. That's crazy. Them feet look like they belong on a little mouse, don't they? They do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> really? You know, we know in our mind that they ain't no way we're going to have him stomp on all these grapes, but he doesn't know that. We can just push a joke so far. We got to get the work done. 
I'm gonna get this over here for you a handle. Thank you. Oh, perfect, man. Thanks. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. You fixed it. You think it overheated? Maybe, or it could be that Mark unplugged it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> this proved beyond a doubt what you're willing to do for us. You know, it's really a good thing that this turned out to be just a prank because we'd be here for three days if we were waiting on bees to stomp all these grapes with them little bitty feet. Uh, well, that's a lot of grape juice. I have never been this proud in my entire life. To me, this is as gorgeous as a brand new newborn baby. All right, all right bees, we gotta gently lift them right up. Uh, no kidding. All right, here we go. Wow. We got all these grapes shredded up. Now we gotta heat a little water up so we can melt a little sugar in there and get started on making this mash. All right, boys, let's get that scup nines in the pot. Here we go. We're almost there, guys. Looking good, boys, looking good. Keep it coming, love. Look at that. What do you want to do, eat that? Oh, that's sweet. It's down too below honey. You know, to say there's a little bit of flavor in there, that's an understatement. It's some of the most flavorful grapes I've ever seen in my life. These scup nines are great. Yeast Nutri and some good champagne yeast. What do you think, Killer? Well, I think it's gonna be great. That's what I'm thinking. We're ready to rock and roll. We gotta wait about seven or 10 days for this to get fermented, and then we're ready to bake some cognac. Well, it's still here. Oh. Man, there's alcohol in it, and it's still got plenty of great flavor. You know what this means, don't you, boy? We're going to have some fine liquor. Let's just get going. You know, our scup nine mash is ready. It's ready to go. We're going to run it today. Here goes nothing. We have two stills here. We're going to do the stripping run to take the alcohol from the mash on Big Sloppy. Then we'll go straight to the small still with that spirit and do the spirit run, which is the second distillation. Nice. We've decided we're not using a thumper since it has to be redistilled anyway. We just simply want all the volume we can get out of it and the shorter time as we can do it. Bees, I'll have to say, old buddy, you're turning into an outstanding liquor man. I'm enjoying seeing this whole process because, like I said, it's my first double distillation to do. The reason cognac is more of a premium liquor is the fact that it's double distilled and it's barrel aged. Now, the double distillation, that brings more of the floral flavors of the fruit to the front. Hey, look. Oh, look here we look at that. Beer. I got a coon pecker. You don't know which ends up on that little rascal. See, it looks like it's working. It's what she never said. All right, boys, all we got's the time now. Won't you kick that far up just a dial? That can run a little harder. Oh, hell. Man, blow the pecker out. No. What in the hell? It's blue. God dang it. What causes that? I don't know. Uh, all of our distillant blue. That's all you can say about it. It's not clear, it blue. When you look in, you see your liquor's turning blue. That's where you didn't clean your copper good. And of course, that sends Mark off the rails because his forte is the copper. So that being said, we've dropped the ball here. And so it's from I don't know what it's from. I got a pretty good idea, though. It's just canker that can, it's, it's tarnish that gets on copper. Copper. Oh, damn it. Your cleaning solution and fill it up, that's what it comes out looking like. So in this instant, our damn scup nine cognac liquor is the cleaning solution. 